good evening, everyone. Uh, it is uh, June 22nd, 2020, and this is a legislative session of the Salisbury City Council. Uh, at this time, I will call the meeting to order, and we will uh, have a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the legislative agenda. A move. And a motion. Second. And a second by is that Michelle. Yes. <laughs> and uh, call uh, Miss uh, Nichols. Oh, I'm sorry. Legislative agenda. My bad. Uh, call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Jack? Aye. Angela? Aye. Michelle? Aye. April? April, are you there? Aye, I'm sorry. That's okay. And the chair votes aye. That's uh, five to zero. At uh, this time, I'll entertain a motion uh, for the consent agenda. So move. So second. Second. Okay. Second by Jack. Okay. Miss Nichols. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, on the consent agenda tonight. We have the June 1st, 2020 work session minutes, the June 1st, 2020 special meeting minutes, the June 8th, 2020 council meeting minutes. And I do have a correction on, on that. And um, the uh, attendees, um, Mayor Jacob Day was, was not in attendance. I, I would just like to remove his name um, before they are signed. Um, and then we have resolution number 3041, declaring that ApartmentSmart.com, Inc. is eligible to receive enterprise zone benefits for their property located at 207 East Market Street. And that's it for the consent agenda. Okay, do we need to make an, a, an amendment on that? Um, it, it was a typo, but it, we could do that if you don't mind. Okay. Just to so entertain a motion for an amendment uh, to make corrections to the June 8, 2020 oh. council meeting minutes. So moved. Oh. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, so we'll vote on the amendment first. Uh, Mr. Heath. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. Mrs. Jackson. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So uh, now we will vote on the motion for, to approve the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Heath. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. Ms. Jackson. Aye. And the chair votes aye. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the award of bids. So moved. Second. Second, was that April? Yes, it was. Okay. Ms. Miller. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. First item this evening. evening is the award of bid for invitation to bid ITB 20-117. That's the Gordy Road Water Main Extension Construction. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Infrastructure and Development to solicit bids from qualified and experienced contractors to furnish all labor, materials, and equipment necessary to construct a 24-inch water main extension from Darwin Drive to Beagland Park Drive along Gordy Road at a total length of approximately 5,286 feet. 
the city followed standard bidding practices by publicly posting the solicitation on the city of Salisbury's procurement portal and the state of Maryland's website, eMaryland Marketplace Advantage. Eight vendors submitted a bid by the due date and time of April 15, 2020 at 2.30 p.m. The departmental memo provides a recap of the pricing submitted by vendor per schedule. The Department of Procurement hereby requests Council's approval to award this contract to Redelac and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $2,157,930.80 contingent upon Council approval of Ordinance 2602, a budget amendment of the City's Water Sewer Capital Project Fund budget to reallocate funding for the Gordy Road Water Main Extension Project. Any questions or comments? Mr. Heath? No questions. Ms. Blake? None. Mrs. Gregory? None. Ms. Jackson? None. Okay. Ms. Miller, okay. you can go to the next one. Okay. The next item is award of bid for contract ITB 20-132. This is a dump truck. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Waterworks to purchase a 2021 International HV513 tri-axle chassis equipped with a 20-foot aluminum dump body through International of Delmarva, utilizing a cooperative purchasing contract secured by Sourcewell, contract number 08. 1716 NVS. Per section SC 16 3, General Policy of Competitive Bidding Exception of the Salisbury City Charter, competitive bidding procedures performed by the City of Salisbury are not necessary or appropriate in the following circumstance. That's contracts in which the City receives a contract price negotiated by the state, county, or other governmental entity pursuant to a valid contract. This charter designation allows the city of Salisbury to participate in cooperative purchasing activities conducted by or on behalf of one or more public procurement units as defined by the American Bar Association Model Procurement Code for state and local governments. Sourcewell was created by state law as a service cooperative and is authorized to establish competitively awarded cooperative purchasing contracts on behalf of itself and its member agencies in education and government. It's a local government unit, public corporation, and public agency pursuant to Minnesota Constitution and the enabling law noted in your council memo. Sourcewell follows the competitive contracting law process to solicit, evaluate, and award competitive purchasing contracts for goods and services. And these contracts are then made available through a series through the Joint Exercise of Powers Law, Minnesota Statute, Section 471.59 to member agencies of which the city of Salisbury has been a longstanding member. The Department of Procurement has confirmed with Sourcewell the validity of the contract, including the terms, pricing and expiration dates, and the prices quoted by International of Delmarva are in accordance with Sourcewell contract prices. There are sufficient funds in the account noted in your packet to purchase the requested truck. The expected deliver delivery will be December 2020 Actually, that's December 2020, not 2021. The Department of Procurement requests Council's approval to award contract ITB 20-132 to International of Delmarva in the amount of $175,227.78. Any questions or comments, uh, Mr. Heath? No questions, no comments. Ms. Blake? None, thank you. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. Ms. Jackson? No questions. Okay. All right, Ms. Miller, if you can, you can go to the next one. Okay. One moment. Quite a lot of pages there. <laughs> okay, next item. It's award of bid for RFP 20-107. That's the engineering construction services for the Gordy Road water main extension. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Infrastructure and Development to solicit proposals from qualified vendors to act as the owner's representative 
for the purpose of providing construction administration and inspection services for the Gordy Road Water Main Extension construction project. The Department of Procurement followed standard bidding practices by public, publicly posting the solicitation on the City of Salisbury's procurement portal and the State of Maryland's website, eMaryland Marketplace Advantage. Five vendors replied by the due date and time of April 14, 2020 at 2.30 p.m. and their proposals were evaluated according to the criteria specified in the solicitation document. The departmental memo provides a recap of the evaluative criteria and the final scoring by vendor. The Department of Procurement hereby requests Council's approval to award this contract in the amount of $141,936 to Whitman Record and Associates, LLP, contingent upon Council approval of Ordinance 2602. Any questions or comments, Mr. Heath? No questions. Ms. Blake? No questions. Mrs. Gregory? No questions. Mrs. Jack Ms. Jackson? Questions. All right, and the last one. Okay. This is award of bid for ITB 20-133. It's three Ford F-350 utility vehicles. The Department of Procurement received a request from the Department of Field Operations to purchase three 2020 Ford F-350 utility vehicles through Hertrick Fleet Servicing Services utilizing a piggyback contract. This type of contract is a form of intergovernmental cooperative purchasing in which an entity, in this case the city of Salisbury, will be extended the same or lower pricing in terms of a contract entered into by another entity, which is actually in this case Howard County, Maryland. Contract noted in your packet, issued by Howard County by virtue of a public competitive bidding process was awarded on December 28, 2016, and is valid through December 31st, 2020. This contract was awarded to Hertrick Fleet Services in response to the solicitation for invitation for bid number 2017-21, new vehicles, class one through seven. Within this contract is a provision that allows any and all public bodies to purchase vehicles under this contract. Per section SC 16-3, competitive general policy of competitive bidding exceptions of the city of Salisbury charter. Competitive bidding procedures performed by the city of Salisbury are not necessary or appropriate in the following circumstance. That's when contracts in which the city receives a contract price negotiated by the state, county, or other governmental entity pursuant to a valid contract. This charter designation therefore allows the city of Salisbury to purchase the items awarded on the Howard County contract noted above. The Department of Procurement has obtained a copy of the Howard County contract and has confirmed its validity and that the prices quoted by Hertrick Fleet Services do not exceed the Howard County contract prices. The delivery lead time for the vehicles is approximately 20 to 24 weeks. That's the vehicle lead time plus the body install lead time. Funding is available in the counts noted in your packet. The Department of Procurement hereby requests Council's approval to award contract ITB 20-133 Ford F-350 utility vehicles to Hertrick Fleet Services in the amount of $139,665. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. Ms. Blake? None. This is Gregory. None. Ms. Jackson. None. And I don't have any. I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving the award of bids, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Ms. Gregory. Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in FY21. Sounds good. Enjoy the rest of your year. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 3042 authorizing capacity fee of the city's connection charge to be waived for the development of 20 East Market Street. 
Good evening, Council. Have a motion. Oh, sorry. So moved. Have a Second. Motion. So moved. I, I, I moved it. Gotcha. All right. Mrs. Gl Ms. Glanz. Sorry. <laughs> Got excited. Uh, so resolution number 3042, a resolution of the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, authorizing the capacity fee of the city's comprehensive connection charge to be waived for the development of 206 East Market Street. Whereas Davis Strategic Development LLC has requested a waiver of the capacity fee for the development of 206 East Market Street. And whereas the proposed development is located inside the city limits and the central business district. And whereas the city, sorry, I lost it. Uh, and whereas the city seeks to encourage development and redevelopment in the central business, business district. And whereas the city seeks to reduce the capacity fees for eligible development and redevelopment in the central business district by means of equivalent dwelling unit EDU incentive areas. And whereas as of the date of this resolution, 37 EDUs have been allocated to 206 East Market Street for Davis Strategic Development LLC, pursuant to resolution number 2948 dated on May 28th, 2019. And whereas since the passage of resolution number 2948, Davis Strategic Development LLC has expanded its development plans to include the development of the adjacent property in conjunction with the development of 206 East Market Street, which will require an additional allocation of 19 EDUs for an allocation of 56 EDUs for, of water and sewer service. And whereas the current capacity fee for one equivalent dwelling unit is $3,533. And whereas the capacity fee for 19 equivalent dwelling units is 67,146. And whereas the city council approved a capacity fee waiver process under ordinance number 2258 for development in the central business district. And whereas the director of infrastructure and development reviewed the request and has determined that the project is eligible for the capacity fee waiver. And whereas the mayor reviewed and the request and supports the sending the request to the city council. And whereas if approved, the EDU allocation for the capacity fee waiver is valid for two years from the time of the signing of the resolution. And whereas the property owner has the option to request an extension of the allocation for two one-year terms if approved in writing by the director of infrastructure and development prior to the expiration of the term. And whereas the allocated EDUs are assigned to the development of 206 East Market Street and cannot be transferred by the recipient. Any questions or comments? Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. Ms. Blake? None. Thank you. This is Gregory? No questions or comments. Ms. Jackson? None. And I don't have any. Uh, at this time, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of resolution number 3042, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Ms. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Mrs. Glam. At uh, this time, I'll entertain a motion for ordinance number 2601 for second reading, approving a budget amendment of the FY 2020 general fund budget to appropriate funds for attorney fees. So moved. Second. Second. A motion and a second. Mr. Tillman. Thank you. This is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2020 general fund to appropriate funds for attorney's fees, whereas the city of Salisbury has projected the amount of attorney's fees expected for FY 2020. And whereas the city of Salisbury is projected in, indicates an increase of 45,000 in fiscal year 2020 appropriations is needed for attorney's fees in order to meet the projected requirements for legal fees for the remainder of FY 2020. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury that the City's Fiscal Year 2020 General Fund Budget be amended as follows. Increase the current year surplus by 45,000. Increase the City Attorney account by 45,000. Any questions or comments? Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. Ms. Blake? None. Mrs. Gregory? None. 
Mr. Jackson? None. Okay, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving ordinance number 2601 for second reading, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. Mrs. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. I'll entertain a motion and a second for to approve ordinance number 2602 for second reading for second reading, which is approving an amendment to the city's water sewer capital project fund budget to reallocate funding for the Gordy Road water main extension project. Mr. Tillman. Thank you. This is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving an amendment of the city's water sewer capital project fund budget to reallocate funding for the Gordy Road water main extension project. Whereas ordinance 2430 authorized the city to allocate funding for projects in the lawsuit proceeds pool, which appropriated funds for various capital projects. And whereas the lawsuit proceeds pool included funding for the Fitzwill Street lift station. And whereas the Department of Infrastructure and Development is seeking to move unused funds from the Fitzwater Street lift station project to the Gordy Road water main extension project provide the funding necessary for the inspection and construction of the Gordy Road Water Main Extension Project. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City of Sol uh, City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, the City's Capital Projects Fund Budget B, and is hereby amended as follows. On the revenue side, uh, the uh, Fitzwater uh, decreased lawsuit proceeds and uh, by $300,000 and Gordy Road increased the lawsuit proceeds by 300,000. Under expenditures, Fitzwater Lift Station, we're gonna decrease construction account by 300,000. Gordy Road, there'll be an increase in engineering of 32,000 and an increase in construction of $268,000. Still need a motion and a second for that, my, my fault. Oh, I apologize. I should have. Uh, so I, I called you. Second. <laughs> so uh, moved. Was that, was that, was that a that second was by? Uh, April. April. Okay. All right. So we've got our motion in a second. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. Ms. Blake? None. Mrs. Gregory? None. Ms. Jackson? None. <laughs> and I don't have any. I'll call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2603 for second reading, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Bureau of Justice Assistance for the purpose of accept accepting grant funds. So moved. Second. Motion by Jack and a second by Ms. Jacks. Mr. Tillman. This is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Bureau of Justice Assistance for the um, purpose of accepting grant funds in the amount of $15,000 and approving a budget amendment to the FY 2020 grant fund to appropriate funds for offsetting remote camera equipment. Whereas the Bur Bureau of Justice Assistance, BGA, has an Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program and whereas the purpose of the JAG program is to provide states, tribes, and local governments with critical funding necessary to support a range of program areas, including law enforcement, prosecution, indigent defense, courts, crime prevention and education, corrections and community corrections, drug treatment and enforcement, planning, evaluation, technology improvement, and crime victim and witness initiatives, and mental health programs and related law enforcement and corrections programs, including behavioral programs and crisis intervention teams. And whereas the city of Salisbury Police Department submitted a grant application to the BJA for funding to reimburse expenses related to the purchase of prime camera equipment in order to, in, in order to expand its ca capacities for remote law enforcement. And whereas the BJA has awarded the Salisbury Police Department funds in the amount of 15,000 for reimbursement of expenses actualized in acquiring remote camera equipment 
And whereas the Salisbury Police Department has, has purchased remote camera equipment for a total of $23,107.68, and whereas uh, all funds allocated shall be used to reimburse funds utilized to purchase the aforementioned remote camera equipment necessary to ex expand the remote uh, enforcement operations of the Salisbury Police Department, and whereas the Salisbury City Charter prohibits the city from expending funds not appropriated or authorized by the council, and whereas the appropriations must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and approval of four-fifths of the council of the city of Salisbury, now therefore be it ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland, that the city of Salisbury accept grant funds in the amount of $15,000 and authorize the mayor to enter into a contract to accept that accept said funds as outlined above and be it further ordained that the city's fiscal year 2020 grant fund budget be and is hereby amended as follows increase the fy20 burn memorial jag revenue account by 15,000 and number two increase the fy20 burn memorial jag expense account by an equivalent amount okay, any questions or comments mr heath no questions or comments Ms. Blake? No questions or comments. Mrs. Gregory? None. Ms. Jackson? None. Okay, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving ordinance number 2603 for second reading, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Aye. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2604 for second reading, so accepting moved. grant funds from the, from the, got a motion, got a second. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Yes, there's a second. <laughs> I think April moved it. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Yeah, and then, okay, then I, right. Yes, that's correct. Second. Mm -hmm. Blake seconds. Mr. Tillman? Thank you. Uh, ordinance 2604 is an ordinance of the City of Salisbury accepting grant funds from the Maryland State Office of Crime Prevention, Youth, and Victim Services in the amount of $24,200 under the FY20 Police Recruitment and Retention Program and amending the FY2020 grant fund budget to appropriate these grant funds for payment of retention bonuses to eligible Salisbury police officers. Whereas the Office of Crime Prevention, Youth and Crime Victim Services has awarded the Salisbury Police Department $24,200 for the purposes of police retention. And whereas the Salisbury Police Department has identified officers in two categories who will benefit from this award based on tenure. And whereas 13 officers with three to five years of service to the city of Salisbury will receive 1,000 as a retention incentive. And whereas 14 officers with six to eight years of service to the city of Salisbury will receive 800 as a retention incentive. And whereas it is the desire of the Salisbury Police Department that this incentive along with other incentives that the Salisbury Police Department already has in place will encourage officers to remain employed with the city of Salisbury. And whereas appropriations necessary to execute the purpose of this grant must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and approval of four-fifths of the council of the city of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland, that the city accepts the aforementioned grant funds to be spent as outlined in the underlying grant agreement connected here to be it further ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury that the city's fiscal year 2020 grant fund budget be hereby amended as follows. Increase the GOCCP revenue account by $24,200 and increase the salaries bonus expense account by $24,200. Okay, any questions or comments, Mr. Heath? Just one comment. Uh, I'm pleased that we're doing this and hopefully it will have a positive effect on our retention. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Blake? No comment. Mrs. Gregory? No comment. Mrs. Jackson? No comment. 
And I, I concur with uh, Jack's sentiments. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this time, I will uh, call for the question. All those in favor of approving ordinance number 2604 for second reading, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye, five zero. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2605 for first reading, which accepts a donation and to approve a budget amendment of the FY21 general budget to appropriate funds from Delmarva Power and Light for the city of Salisbury's COVID-19 micro grant program. Have a motion. So moved. Second. 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 I think April beat everybody. <laughs> Mr. Tillman. All right. Yes. Ordinance 25, uh, 26. Yes, can you hear me? Did Mark disappear on us? No, he's there. Mark, are you there? Yes. We hear you now, yes. All right. Uh, ordinance number 2605 is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to accept a donation and to approve a budget amendment of the FY21 general fund budget to appropriate funds received from the Delmarva Power and Light Company for the city of Salisbury COVID-19 micro grant program. Whereas the Delmarva Power and Light Company wishes to donate up to $25,000 to the City of Salisbury to be used for the COVID-19 business microgrant program. And whereas the funds received from the Delmarva Power and Light Company will directly benefit businesses in the revolving loan boundary map that suffered losses in relation to the COVID-19 State of Maryland executive orders and mandated closures. And whereas the City of Salisbury Office of Business Development requests that these funds be Funds in the amount of $25,000 be placed in the COVID-19 microgrant account to provide microgrants for eligible businesses. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, that funds of up to $25,000 are accepted from the Delmarva Power and Light Company and be it further ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, that the City's fiscal year 2021 general fund budget be and is hereby amended as follows increase the general fund revenue by $25,000 and to increase the revolving loan micro grant budget by $25,000. Thank you, Mark. Any questions or comments, Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. We have an amendment. Oh, today. okay. I Ms. would Jackson. like to amend ordinance 2605 by the following line four, strike FY21 general and insert revolving loan. Line 24, strike general and insert revolving. Line 27, strike general fund revenue and insert revolving loan fund. Line 28, strike micro grant budget and insert fund expense account. That'll be all. We have a second. 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 Second from Mr. Heath. All right, we will uh, uh, vote on the amendment. All those in favor of, um, of the amendment to ordinance number 2605, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath. Aye. Ms. Blake. Aye. Mrs. Gregory. Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye on the amendment. All those in favor of approving ordinance number 2605 as amended, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? 
Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. All right, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2606 for first reading, accepting grant funds from the Department of Housing and Community Development. So moved. Second. Got a, got a motion and a second. Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Ordinance 2606, a resolution of the City of Salisbury accepting grant funds from the Department of Housing and Community Development, a principal department of the state of Maryland, CHCD, and amending the FY 2020 budget to allow for the transfer of up to $24,494.66 of the funds of the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, Inc. Uh, care of the Salisbury Folk Festival for processing of approved categorized expenditures consistent with a grant in connection with a folk festival and to allow for the expenditure of $12,505.34 for the COVID-19 micro grant fund program. Whereas the city of Salisbury in April 2019 submitted an operating assistance grant to the Department of Housing and Community Development for financial assistance in carrying out community development activities specifically to include assistance with the National Folk Festival to be held in the city of Salisbury. And whereas the city of Salisbury has recently, was recently awarded grant funds of $40,000 by the Department of Housing and Community Development, a principal department of the state of Maryland, and signed the grant agreement on December 18th, 2019. And whereas the CHCD authorized the city of Salisbury to disperse grant funds directly to the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, care of the National Folk Festival and considered that doing so was an appropriate use of grant funds related to the Folk Festival. And whereas invoices and proof of payment to substantiate funds directly transferred to the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District care of the National Folk Festival is still required in connection with the grant. And whereas the National Council for the Traditional Arts in collaboration with the city of Salisbury announced the postponement of the 2020 National Folk Festival, and whereas the National Folk Festival incurred many expenses for the 2020 festival in advance of the postponement, and whereas pursuant to the operating agreement between the City of Salisbury and NCTA signed in June of 2017, the City is responsible for the incurred expenses, and whereas the City of Salisbury desires to transfer up to $24,494.66 of grant funds directly to the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District care of the National Folk Festival in order to allow the festival to be reimbursed for those funds as outlined in the CHCD grant exhibits. And whereas $3,000 of the grant funds will be used to pay the rent for the office space needed for the Salisbury Folk Festival manager. And whereas due to the postponement of the 2020 festival, there is money remaining from the DHCD grant, and whereas the City of Salisbury already has in place with the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, Inc., a memorandum of understanding to assist in the administration of funds for the Salisbury National Folk Festival, and whereas the memorandum of understanding shall be amended by adding in a specific requirement for the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, Inc., to require it to provide full financial reporting in accordance with it, DHCD grant to ensure that all grant requirements are followed and not violated, which shall also include indemnification language to protect the city of Salisbury. And whereas the city of Salisbury has submitted a reallocation plan for $12,505.34 of the remaining funds to be used in conjunction with a COVID-19 business related micro grant program. And whereas CHCD is currently reviewing the reallocation plan for the remaining funds now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland that the DHCD grant award of $40,000 is hereby accepted by the City of Salisbury and that the grant fund shall be utilized by the City of Salisbury in accordance with the terms and conditions of the grant to include permission for the City of Salisbury to transfer $24,494.66 from the grant to the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, Inc for the use in connection with the Salisbury Folk Festival as outlined in the grant award. That 3,000 be transferred for the payment of office space rent for the Folk Festival manager and that $12,505.34 from the grant be authorized for use as part of the COVID-19 micro grant program. 
be it further ordained by the city council that an amendment to the memorandum of understanding with Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District Inc. Uh, to identify the uh, DHCD grant funds is also approved and be it further ordained by the city council that the FY 2020 budget is hereby amended as follows. Increase the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development revenue account by $40,000. Increase the office rent expense account by $3,000. Increase the subrecipient SBY A and E expense account by $24,494.66. And increase the COVID-19 microgrant program expense account by $12,500. $5.34. Thank you, Mark. Any questions or comments? Mr. Heath? No questions or comments. Ms. Blake? None. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. Ms. Jackson? No. At this time, I'll call for the the question on to approve ordinance number 2606 for first reading. Mr. Heath? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2607 for first reading, authorizing the mayor to sign a grant agreement and accept the grant from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. So moved. Second. Who was the second? April. April. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tillman? Yes, 2607 is an ordinance of the city of Salisbury authorizing the mayor to sign the grant agreement and accept a grant from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation for the purpose of a tree canopy study and approving an amendment of the FY21 budget to allocate funds for the purposes of implementation. Whereas the city of Salisbury is a partner with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation through a Healthy Waters Roundtable work group. And whereas the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the city of Salisbury have been working together to improve the urban tree canopy throughout the city of Salisbury. And whereas the city of Salisbury desires to prepare a tree canopy study and assessment of tree planting opportunities. And whereas the project will enhance the environment of the city's residents and visitors. And whereas the Chesapeake Bay Foundation has awarded the city a grant in the amount of $69,866.60 to provide for the tree canopy study and whereas the city shall accept the grant in the form of reimbursements and transfer of those funds from the reimbursement account to the capital projects account, now therefore be enacted and ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland, that the city of Salisbury does hereby authorize the mayor to sign the attached grant agreement, accepting the project terms for the betterment of the city and its residents and accept the grant of $69,866.60 from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation to perform a tree canopy study and further authorizes grant reimbursements to be transferred to the appropriate capital project account. Be it further, further ordained that the city's grant fund budget be amended as follows, increase the FY21 Chesapeake Bay Foundation grant revenue account by $69,866.60 and increase the FY21 Chesapeake Bay Foundation grant expense account by $69,866.60. Any questions? Mira, you're muted. I'm muted. You're muted. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, any at this time, I entertain questions or comments, Mr. Heath. No questions or comments. Ms. Blake. None. Mrs. Gregory. None. Ms. Jackson. None. Hello. Okay. I will uh, call for the question on ordinance number two six zero seven for first reading. Uh, Mr. Heath? Aye. 
Ms. Blake? Aye. Ms. Gregory? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you all. Uh, Julia, do we have any public comments? We do not. Um, and I don't see any folks on here waving hands or anything, so. Okay. Uh, do you have any anything for the good of the order? No, uh, just thank you for um, uh, approving these grants. Uh, you know, we're excited, especially about the, the police department um, retention grant. We're excited about that. And uh, I know the Colonel is going after uh, future grants that are like that. So we're trying to take advantage of all the money we can get our hands on to uh, make sure we continue to stay uh, an attractive place to work. So appreciate the support. Thank you, Mr. Heath. Uh, no comments. Ms. Blake. Um, yeah, just a couple things. One, of course, as always, if you're healthy, please, please give blood, please. Very desperate here on the shore. Um, two, I do know I just want to bring up and remind everybody um, it, it, that's in the city council, uh, it, whatever your role is, to make sure that you're open consulting and making sure that everybody has a at least understands or knows what's going to be moved forward or or here's what could be coming up next um two, the other thing is too I, I want to remind everybody to be very mindful that the um salisbury is a very nice place it's a great place to live and our movement is is a kind kindness be very very mindful people hold us in a higher standard be very careful in um your words and actions they they weigh more than maybe if somebody else is going to say it or blow off on social media or facebook or TikTok or whatever whatever else is out there but well, i don't even know what else is out there but i just that's just a very serious reminder um the direction of our town depends on our collaborativeness our consultation efforts and it depends on um our words and actions to people uh we don't wake up and say we want to hurt somebody today but if somebody told me that i said something or did something that hurt their feelings um i need i need to to rectify that it's nobody's purposeful mission and be very careful and be very mindful we are held to a higher standard people are looking and watching you can see by the slew of emails that we get, um the kinds of things people say um and the things that they you know the rhetoric that goes on or you know they're questioning some things that we don't understand but it's up to us to find a way to understand and find a way to respond um and that's all i have to say for this evening Thank you, Ms. Blake. Mrs. Gregory? Um, not much other than the usual. Just be kind. Please, 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 please wear a mask out in public. We are not through this coronavirus. I know, you know, it, it feels like it's been forever, but we're, we're only a few months into this and we really, really, really need to be mindful of, of keeping are our friends and family healthy so if you go out the mask is not for your protection it's for everybody else's please wear a mask when you go out thank you very much mrs jackson well first and foremost i would like to thank you all for the love that you showed me during the death of my great-grandson um the plants and the flowers and everything they just warm my heart but I also want to touch on some things that in since this year started has been really bothering me with this council because we've been very, very close and we've been very communicative. And here lately, we haven't been doing that. And I'm kind of upset about it. And I wanted to wait until the work session to say what I'm going to say, but I don't like the point of us not being notified of things, the city information, that we have to hear it via the news or social media, Facebook, or even the radio stations. We have to hear other things that we should know before our constituents come to us. 
we should know this information and our constituents are coming to us asking us questions about things that we don't know first don't do not know about um second of all um having things done in the city and everybody's not a part of it doesn't really work for me um just like the black lives matter street naming just was one one of a couple things and then putting camp hope in a residential neighborhood without even informing the residents that it was going to be there that's another thing for me. I'm a district representative. And if something is happening in my district, I feel as though I should know that when it's happening or before it happens, I should know because I need to inform my residents and my constituents. And when they come to me, when I have to get a call on the phone or when I have to um, see on Facebook or somebody's telling me, Miss April, what are these tents doing here? And I have not a clue. That's an insult to me. Because as a district representative, as a city council representing the city of Salisbury, we should know every step the city is moving forward. I love this city and I'm gonna tell you, I love all council members and Julia, Andy and Mayor Day, but we have to do better than this collectively. We have to do, because we started out this, I, and I know COVID has caused a strain on everybody. God knows I know because I'm one of the people that it attacked. But we have to do better than this because I personally do not want people calling me about stuff I have no information about because then it makes me look like, well, what are you doing on the city council? If you do not know what's going on in your own community. Those are one thing. And then I, I, I just, I, I just, I'm, I was really upset. Ju Julie and I have had a talk. Jack and I have had a talk. Um, and like I said, there's no hatred, malice, and discontent in my heart because I'm not that person. But we have to do better. When it comes to this city, we have to pull together, pull, tighten up our bootstraps, and do what we need to do to, to continue the legacy that this city council in the last four years, last four and a half years, have done. We need to continue that. So let's be forthcoming with information. Let's not be uh, having hidden agendas or any of that thing. Let's do what's right by our city. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. A um, couple of things I, I want to uh, recognize and give a, a special recognition to uh, Delmarva Power for their for their donation to the COVID-19 micro grant program. Uh, I, th I think this program is going to be great in assisting our local businesses uh, that have struggled through this. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I sound like a broken record, but please support our local businesses. Please support our local restaurants. Uh, the, these are the people that employ the people in our city. Um, so uh, I want to thank everybody. A uh, couple of announcements, or not announcements, but just reminders. There is no meeting next Monday. Uh, it is a fifth Monday, so there's no meeting on the 29th. Our next meeting is going to be the July 6th work session. Uh, and then our next uh, legislative session will be, uh, will be July... 13th and uh, there is a public hearing uh, at the July 13th uh, council meeting uh, for an annexation uh, agreement and an annexation plan so uh, just for public consumption and everybody else uh, please stay safe uh, love your neighbor and uh, you know we love our city I love this council I love everybody that's on it we're a family and uh, I want to continue the momentum we have this year and keep everything going. And uh, uh, thank you all for your comments. And uh, uh, I, I take them to heart and, and I hope everybody does too. So with that, we are adjourned and hopefully see everybody in two weeks. Stay safe.